If vector r is the position vector of a point in three dimensions with coordinates x, y and z, then the scalar version r is usually taken to be the modulus or the length of the vector r, given by the sum of the squares of the coordinates with the square root taken. Elsewhere we have looked at the grad or gradient of a function f of r and written down a general formula for it. Let me remind you about that now. The gradient of a function f of r is given by f primed of r times the unit vector in the direction r, that's r hat. f primed of r just means df by dr, with ordinary derivatives because f depends only on the one variable r. In this presentation, I want to take the gradient again. That will give us something called the Laplacian of f of r. The Laplacian is just grad squared. We often write it as grad squared without the vector symbol on, but we have to understand that what it actually means is grad dot grad. That's called the Laplacian. It's a very important operator in theoretical physics and many areas of engineering. So what I'm going to be doing is looking at grad squared acting on f of r. It's a matter of taking the gradient formula that we've got in the red box above and applying the grad a second time. Some functions have their Laplacian equal to zero. When we finish finished looking at the Laplacian of f of r, we will identify one such function which is very important, for example, in electromagnetic theory. Let's begin, though, by just keeping some general function f of r, that we don't, whose, fun whose form we don't know yet. I need to take the formula in the red box and hit it with a grad again. Remember that, as well as containing differential operators d by dx, d by dy and d by dz, grad is also a vector. And so what we're looking at here is the vector, sorry, is the dot product between the vectors grad and r hat, but with the f primed of r also in the way. What we're differentiating then is going to be a product and we'll need to apply the product rule. Let's first of all look at the first component, the bit with d by dx. To work that out, we'll need to remember what r hat looks like. We call that r hat could be written as x over r, y over r, z over r. So its first component is x over r. So the first term in the grad of f primed of r, r hat remember it's a dot product, so the first piece of this dot product is going to be d by dx acting on f primed of r times x over r. We need to use the product rule. So that's d by dx on f primed of r multiplied by x over r plus f primed of r d by dx acting on x over r. In the first term we'll need the chain rule. That's going to give us d by dr on f primed of r times dr by dx times x over r then plus f primed of r, and here we have a quotient, and we use the quotient rule, so we square the denominator, and then on the top we have the denominator, and we differentiate the numerator, minus the numerator, and differentiate the denominator. I want you now to recall something we did elsewhere in an earlier maths cast, which was to show that dr by dx is actually x over r. 
So the line above simplifies. First of all, let's get the bracket there that should be there. That d by dr is acting only on f prime, so that's going to make f double primed of r. And we replace dr by dx with x over r, and there's already an x over r. That's dealt with the first term. Then we have plus f primed of r, and there's r squared underneath. dx by dx is just 1, and dr by dx we've identified a moment ago as x over r, so that will be minus x squared over r. So a bit more simplification gives f double primed of r times x squared over r squared plus f primed of r and there's not really a lot that I can do with the numerator here. I could maybe multiply through by r top and bottom so we get r squared minus x squared over r cubed. Now remember this was just the first term in the dot product. So what about the second term? Remember when you do a dot product you've got to do three terms and add them up. Well r is completely symmetric in the way x, y and z appear. So we can now use that symmetry property to simply write down the second term. It's going to be f double primed of r and this time y squared over r squared plus f primed of r and r squared minus y squared over r cubed. It's just that wherever I see an x I've changed it to a y. We can do that without doing all the intervening work. Similarly the third term is f double primed of r times z squared over r squared plus f primed of r r squared minus z squared over r cubed. And now to get the dot product, which of course is the Laplacian of f of r, we add up the three terms. That's what you do when you have a dot product. So that will be f double primed of r as a factor. And the three terms were this one, x squared over r squared, this one with y squared over r squared, and this one with z squared over r squared. So adding them up gives x squared plus y squared plus z squared over r squared. And then in each case there was also a term with f primed of r. All of those had denominator r cubed, and in each case we had r squared minus x squared plus r squared minus y squared plus r squared minus z squared. Now look at the simplifications. In the first term, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is r squared, so this bracket is just 1. So we get f double primed of r. For the other term, there'll be an r cubed underneath still. Can you see there are three r squareds there? But there's minus x squared and minus y squared and minus z squared. But x squared plus y squared plus z squared is r squared, so that's minus an r squared. So that simplifies further. And we just get 2r squared over r cubed. And finally, with some cancellation, f double primed of r plus 2 over r f primed of r. That is our Laplacian for any function f of r. I want to finish with a very brief example. I'm going to look at the case when f of r is just 1 over r. Then we 
get f prime of r. We just use the power law. So that's negative 1 r to the negative 2. And for the second derivative, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 r to the negative 3. So now the Laplacian of 1 on r is substituting these values. f double prime is 2 over r cubed plus 2 over r times minus 1 over r squared. And can you see that that's 2 over r cubed minus 2 over r cubed, which cancels and makes 0. So we've discovered a quite important result that the Laplacian of the function 1 over r is 0. 1 over r is an example of a harmonic function. A harmonic function is one whose Laplacian is 0. I'll conclude there.